Hello, welcome to my channel again, and I hope you've had a good week. This is the third video about our tenants in our properties that we rent them to. Seeing tenants as clients, and this week we are going to look at HMOs, houses of multiple occupation, in case you don't know. This is a house where you rent out room by room to one or two people within that house. <music> Some places have en suites and some they share the bathroom and kitchen, etc. It's a different dynamic from a single let. Quite often you have problems because there's clashes, there's damage, and there's all th sorts of things that can go wrong within an HMO. I've even seen a landlord being bullied by a group of tenants and they've not paid rent for months and they just tell the landlord to get lost because he's managing himself. You don't do that. If that's the case and there's seriously bullying going on where he was threatened physically, then you know you get the police, you make sure that you've got all the documentation right and you go to court and you have them, you serve them notice and eventually you'll have them evicted. You know, I've seen so many different things, I have. So let's just talk about our clients, our tenants and how should we do it and how can we do it better? I, I, I like these subjects, I do, because these are the end goal which people don't actually look at, but this is where you can make your life a lot easier, especially if you're getting a lot of damage, I'm gonna give you some tips on that, and how to get on and have a much better relationship with tenants and have an easier time. When you do an HMO, think about location. Where are the people coming from? Most important, you must think, who is this HMO for? Is it for students, in which case just have students in there? Is it for blue collar workers, the ones working in factories and shops and places like that? Is it for unemployed? Or is it for white collar workers? So, such as solicitors, architects, doctors, and there's, I, I see there's four different types I do. Mixing uh, isn't really a good idea, in my opinion. Okay, the different the different types of classes that I've, or one for a better word, classes, those groups, okay? So I think you, you really should think, what am I going to do? Okay, so if you had two students and three white collar, or two white collar and one in unemployed, I don't think it's going to go well. First of all, someone's there all day, someone else is going to be, so that might be if it's a common room, they're going to be sitting in the common room pretty much all day. The students are probably going to want to party a little bit more, knowing some students, I used to be a student many years ago, etc. And the combination is not great, whereas the white collar, let's say it's a couple of doctors, they're going to want to probably read, study, yes, chill back, but they're certainly not going to want all the noise and, and etc. So you've got to think about the dynamic of who is coming in and make sure that you deliver the best to it. So if you're going to have students, make it a bit more funky, have some games on the walls and things like that so they can actually do some stuff. You will design your property to your end user. Not many people think of this. You know, if you're going to have students, you know, if you've got a small courtyard or something, put some AstroTurf down, do a small football pitch, whatever, do you see? Just come up with some different ideas, but make your HMO user-friendly to the group that you want in there. One of the things that I do with my HMOs is I, when I was running them, I don't run them now, um, I have them all uh, managed by someone else now, but when I was doing it, I wanted to always to work with the tenants and have a good relationship. If I could get discount cards from places, and sometimes you can you can buy some discount cards that might cost two, three pounds, and, and so in the local shops or markets or whatever that's going on. I used to buy them and I used to give each person a tenant so they could get a discount, whether it was a 10% discount or whatever it was. But I wanted to give something back and if it's costing me two or three pounds per tenant that was a, a good thing that I would do each year especially to start off with and see if they use it the second thing is I make sure that there's local information so with an HMO quite often you'll get again two types you'll get one that's what going to be their home and that's where they're going to live and you'll get other people who live elsewhere but they're coming into work in that area so they're probably pretty much going to be there Monday to Friday and then they go home on Friday night so again, the local information is really good. And if you've got recommendations of which restaurants are good, which bars are good, where it's a good fun place to go, then it's really good to put that in. 
and they like it remember what we're trying to do we're trying to build relationship we're trying to have a good rapport with our uh, tenants and so they want to stay there and they talk about the place and what we do to other people they know and believe me when they eventually leave there's a queue of people wanting to come into that house because of the things that you're doing so you know we're reducing void straight away by these small things that you're doing the other thing it's really important let's talk about damage in a HMO it's quite common you will have damage whether that is in the kitchen or a toilet or something it's usually in the common areas you've got the biggest problem is because no one wants to own up to it nobody and it's a common complaint of everyone uh, all the landlords by saying look there's you know there's damage here that say you know one of the cabinets has been broken or is a fist punch put through one of the walls or something like this don't know anything about it don't know anything about it golden tip guys find a house captain it'd be one of your tenants who has a strong character is confident and they want to do it you would give them a discount on their rent you know maybe it's five pounds a week or you know, 20 pound a month whatever it's going to be but for that they will keep an eye on the place and they will let you know if things are going wrong if somebody one of the tenants secretly brings in a friend to live in the room without your knowledge you'll know about that if someone's keep doing a lot of mess you'll know about that fairly quickly so habits won't be formed and you can deal with that straight away. The house captain can be known to the others and can be incognito so not known. It's up to them and you can do work with that. It's really good. It's worth every penny of the discount to have somebody like that because you've got strong communication coming in all the time. Damages. How do you mitigate damages? So I used to do this. I used to say to the tenant, so I've got HMOs which either have four or up to six people in. But I always used to say, look guys, if there's no damage in the property uh, in this month, okay, on the last day of the month, the last Friday of the month, I would send them about 30 or 40 pounds worth of pizza at a particular time. They'd tell me the time and I would just send it round. So I would just all go to see the pizza place. I'd always work a bit of discount for myself. And each month I'd just send 30, 40 pounds. Now think about that. You're saying, Trevor, but it's 30, 40 quid. Is it not better having 30, 40 quid where they're saying, listen, no one's damaging it. Think about the mentality. They're all now working to protect my house and they don't want damage because they want the free pizza. It's interesting, if for not a lot of money, you can actually uh, save a lot of damage and again they talk about it to uh, their friends and when they leave they say cool you get free pizza in that place it's a pizza all right if you're doing white collar tenants it'll have to be a bit better than pizza it might be uh, you know give them a night out in a restaurant or something but these are some of the tips and also if you're going to do the pizza it has to make sure that nothing is left in the hallways. It's a bugbear of an HMO that a lot of people will put things in a hallway where there's shoes, where there's a bike, where there's boxes. They mustn't have it. Hallways must be clear at all times for fire regulations. And if you make sure that the cleaner is reporting to you back, the captain's reporting to you, providing it's all been clear and there's no damage, they get their pizza. Because you will have a cleaner going in once or twice a week to clean the communal areas. Guys, I hope you find this helpful. I hope that uh, this will help. And please send comments, questions. And uh, if you want me to talk about certain subjects, just let me know. I look forward to seeing you next week for the last one in this series. Take care. God bless you. <laughs>